I'm in Romania, in the mining village of Rosha Montana. It's the planned site of Europe's biggest gold mine. International investors are on the scent of billions of euros worth of gold. But resistance to the project means the plans are on hold. My investigations start in the Transylvanian city of Cluj-Napoca. It's one of the most well-off places in Romania. And I constantly come across this slogan, Save Russia Montana. It's a symbol of the resistance movement against gold mining in Romania. And I've been invited to the heart of the resistance movement. For activists like Tudor Brodatsian, saving the environment is more important than earning billions from gold. There were other campaigns that uh, did not resist so many years, that did not make it through. Because uh, if you look at uh, what we did, we were always one step in front of the company, in front of the politicians that supported this, uh, this company. And uh, look at the crowd. Because usually the media in Romania says that we are 100, 150. If this is 150 people, then yeah. There are a lot more than 150 people. Many of the protesters are young. Romania was once one of the most brutal Eastern Bloc dictatorships. But this is a different generation to the one which fought communism. Their fight is against gold mining and for the environment. Fellow activist Mihai Gotsin says this is the most important civil movement since the end of communism. Gotsin says that in the past 10 to 15 years, protest movements have lost all the battles they have fought with the corrupt political class in Romania. The success of this movement has set a precedent and that's given people confidence, not only with Russia Montana, but with other issues too. Tudor is coming with me to Russia Montana to explain the reason for this grassroots movement. We're heading into the Carpathian Mountains. Before we get to the village, we pass a banner put up by the investors who want to mine gold here. The banner promises development in the region. Tudor sees that differently. There are many claims that the, the size of the project will affect all of this region. First of all, you have to understand that taking the, the forest out and the, the, the fertile land will reveal a lot of dust that is going to be spread all around this area. And that, that, that dust is the risk to have small, even ra radioactive particles. More to this is the big cyanide lake that will have uh, evaporations. And uh, the gas that is going up into the air will definitely affect the crops of the people living in all of this area. Cyanide is used around the world to separate gold from the rock. And there are plans to use it in Russia, Montana. These men are waiting to get down to work. They've been on the payroll here for more than a decade. But the investors are still waiting for a government permit before mining operations can start. No, no, because it's, uh, uh, if, if this mining, if the mining project goes ahead, what you see, all of that mountain there will become a huge hole into the ground. The Russia Montana Gold Corporation wants to remove four peaks here and extract one gram of gold from every ton of rock. The company has paid for numerous families to leave their land over the past 10 years. But the most stubborn won't go. And Tudor has brought me to see one of them, Ugain David. He's an icon of the protest movement and the best known activist in the village. Come on, he says, let's go to see the cows. We can talk in the shed. We're enemies, he says, we're at war. 
It's the relationship between an ordinary man and a large company which wants to trample on my rights in my own home. Like everywhere else in the world where mining takes place, the investors want the locals to sell up. Ugain has a lot of land here, land he inherited. And he accuses politicians of selling out to the company. You can feel the corruption here, he says. Corruption is one issue, but the dangers of mining with cyanide are larger. Romania has already suffered the consequences. I'm visiting Raul Morisan. He's a scientist and he's going to show me photos of another gold mine south of Russia, Montana. There was a cyanide disaster here in the early 1970s. This is the dam that broke. The dam broke here, says Raul. He supports the opponents of the mine. Toxic mud flooded the village of Jertesh. During the communist dictatorship of Nikolai Ceausescu, no one was permitted to talk about the cyanide catastrophe and its victims. These photos were found later in secret police archives. I'm driving south toward Jertesh. After decades of gold mining with cyanide, this is what the place looks like today. Chirla Ioan survived the disaster. He lives at the site and remembers what happened. They were all drowned in the mud, and I couldn't pull them out, he says. I tried, but I got stuck in the poisonous mud as well. It was really thick and sticky. The clothes the dead had on were practically burned off their bodies. They were naked. The cyanide and rock mix came down from the banks up there. I'm back in Russia, Montana. There was some gold mining here during communist times. I meet up with Doreen Rus. He's one of the last people employed at the site of the old communist-era mining company. But gold was mined earlier too. And he's showing me the way into what's a museum now. We're heading down to where miners dug for gold 2,000 years ago. Doreen works mainly as a tourist guide now. And he says the Romans mined clearly visible veins of gold. It's different from the rock around us, yes? It's a little black. Because of that, they call it vein. Because you can see in the human body the vein different from the human body. Nowadays, the gold isn't that easy to find. There's only one gram in a ton of rock. The Romans could almost grab gold with their bare hands. 100 years ago, miners used dynamite. And now they need cyanide. I've arranged a meeting with Katalin Hosu from the Russia Montana Gold Mining Corporation. We drive past the wreckage of the communist era operations to a disused mine overlooking the village. You put the rocks in a mill. The mill is a horizontal uh, cylinder with steel balls inside that will crush the, the rock it will crush it to a very fine powder. That way you can liberate the gold and silver from the rock. By using cyanide, which binds the precious metals. The result is a toxic mixture of old rocks, which will be stored out here in the hills. But the gold corporation still wants a green image. And so we visit a water purification plant. After 2,000 years of mining the bare rock, the mountain streams in Russia, Montana, look like this. The water has washed out heavy metals like cadmium. What do you want to say? You said you're doing an environmental friendly project here. So, so basically, yes, yes. This water, all of it will be treated, but it can have life. What can it have? Fish, life. <laughs> There's no life in, in, in that stream at this point. 
The argument over Europe's largest gold mining project has turned into a war of interpretation. Hosu says the gold corporation does more good too. They are archaeologists mm -hmm. and uh, they are going to join us for, for the tour. We'll have a tour and then on our way out we're going to stop where the, where the miners are working. And for the first time I realize what the men are doing here while they can't mine for gold. Some of them are emptying old Roman mining shafts. Occasionally they turn up some old artifacts. Like this ancient wooden ladder. It was the wrong way round when they found it. A sign that there's no more gold in this tunnel. Outside again, I'm approached by a group of people. We're desperate, says this woman. There's no other way of making a living here apart from mining. We always lived from mining here and we want to keep on doing so. Us and our children and their children. Please help us. Mining isn't like it used to be. There are new technologies. I ask if my guide put them up to this. No, it's a small community. I, th I think they, they, they saw you in the morning or something. <laughs> I have my doubts, but it's clear that there's a clash of two very different interest groups in Russia, Montana. It's getting late. I meet up again with anti-mining activists Tudor and Ugain. They're not budging. Ugain says he doesn't care what they want to dig for. He's only interested in the fact that they want to make money by destroying his world. And whatever happens, the argument over the gold mine shows one thing at least. An environmental conscience is developing in Romania two decades after the end of communism.